Am I? I'm on. Where is Tan? Tan is probably my favorite person on the planet. I am, I am your biggest fan. Um, I am I'm Ian Hubert. I've been doing um, visual effects and filmmaking and kind of wacky stuff for like 25 years. In uh, 2012, I had the, the crazy opportunity to work with like some of the coolest people I've ever met on, uh, on Tears of Steel. And um, yeah, um, recently, like is within the past couple of months, I've started making these little like lazy tutorial things because what's cool about, um, oh, thank you. Because what's cool about CG is like, when you learn a new thing, like sometimes there's just this feeling that you're like leveling up, like you're just like, oh, I can, I can now simulate cloth itself. And you're just like, poof. And so it's this, um, I'm just trying to kind of pack that in there into little like kind of bite-sized pieces. And a lot of that involves like um, just camera mapping and uh, image, image textures and stuff. Speaking of which, so this is a photoreal environment in, uh, in Blender. Like, ha ha, ha ha ha. Um, still though. Like, uh, photos are photoreal because they're, they're photos. And um, I, love, I love image textures. And obviously, it's not all the time. Lots of people are making, you know, beautiful animations or games with these cool styles where, you know, they're not trying to go for photorealism. They're not trying to do, like, quick and dirty. But I work mostly in visual effects, where that is absolutely the name of the game. And they're, like, they're really common. Like, oh, yeah. All of like those crazy cool iconic moments from, from 90 CG usually involve some sort of like, I think they called it photogrammetry at the time, maybe they still, I call it camera projection, uh, projection mapping, all, all of that, but it's just, you know, where you use image textures to try to like get a jump start on recreating something in the computer. Um, and it's great because all the lighting and the textures and everything are actually baked in. They're not doing any, you know, crazy path tracing or all of that. And, um, and like, look at that garbage can lid. It's just stuck on the wall. <laughs> this thing is so low poly. In fact, I modeled it. It's, it's about 65 polygons. Um, <laughs> same with like the, the pod racing in Star Wars. That was they took they built the miniatures. They just put those pictures right on these low poly little little environments. Or like like this. Obviously, Fight Club so slick. Um, the filmmaking and the craft is all so good. But any of you could easily do this on your laptop. Like at this point, from like a technical aspect, and that's that's so cool. This is like the Windows screensaver like maze with like the little rat in it. Um, and like you can see places where. Um, like it reprojected the jug back onto the jug kind of behind it if you frame by frame, or like there's this weird, uh, oh, oh, it's showing me, let's see. All right, oh, here we go, yeah. Or like there's this place where this cable looks like it's kind of intersecting the floor. That's just like a problem from the stitching where they were stitching the different photos together, and so they slapped this big fatty cable over the top of the whole thing. Um, and it's like, and this isn't bashing on it at all. You pause any shot, any CG shot from a movie, and you can usually start to see the, the human seams, where it's like you look at any shot of a, of a city, and you'll see the duplicated assets everywhere. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I don't know what's, what's up with this random blue, blue ghost truck. Um, but yeah, this is all, this is all from the power of this, of this uh, image projection, and like UV unwrapping, which is so powerful. Unfortunately, there is this guy, and... He kept me away from UV unwrapping for like literally 15 years because it's like, you know, you take your psychedelic quilt and then you wrap that around the donut and you export that into like Photoshop and you do your paint over and then you bring it back and you line it all up and you're like, oh, that's cool. You know, you just take the thing and you just, uh, you just unwrap it. Um, and this is, this is, I know, this is CG 101. This is like first day. This is like, yeah, but uh, that's why I love the, uh, the import images as planes. In fact, is the person who created that here like... Oh, like it's such it's such like an easy thing, but it's one it's one face, it's one image. In fact, it's almost a finished wall because uh, some philosophers have speculated that walls might be nothing more than uh, just a single planar surface. Um, all right, so we import it as a plane. We can extrude it a little bit. We can do it again. We can bring in a ground plane. Um, I like to line up corners and edges because there's these microbiomes that are existing corners that are like hard to do in CG. You get that for free with image textures. Add ed edge loops. Extrude some stuff. We're beveling. We're gonna turn the lamp into a into a sun lamp. This is a plunder conference. You all know exactly like how how this goes. Um, but this is this is a a picture I took in my town, um, doing the exact same thing, just extruding it out, really low poly, um, edge loops extruding. I like to add extra emphasis on the windows just because they're gonna be high contrast areas. You can either make like the windows glossy so they're reflecting back into the environment, or set up like an image texture you know behind it so it looks like it actually has some some depth. I'm going to project this at a slight offset, because if you project straight on, you get that shearing along that axis. Um, and then you can just copy, copy and paste, because it's all, it's all in the computer. Um, 
And uh, it's, it's maybe wrong, but I've started stealing things from just places, coffee shops, and like out on the street. You set it up as the camera background, model some stuff, you know, project from view, and you just, you just have it. And then it's easy to get carried away, so I'm like, I'm going to make this shelf. Just slapping that all together. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> and then there's this shearing. And so it's like, all right, we'll just reproject that bit and uh, line it up with this little bit of wood down there. Um, <laughs> and it's like... This is maybe not great for like a featured thing, but if it's like a background, if you're trying to make a whole mall, that will totally, that will totally cut it. Um, like anything, anything cubic is really easy to unwrap. You don't even have to like do project from view sometimes. You just line up the initial vertices and then you can do like edge loops and stuff and it'll just all, all match. And then you just have it and you can copy and paste it and you can use that <laughs> on like projects forever. Aw. Um, so I, I worked on that shot a little bit more, and uh, somebody asked me if I hand-painted the, uh, the specular maps. And it's like, no, no, that's just plugged into the, uh, the roughness with a little clamp there so the darker values are, are reflected, which is, you know, it's not always the best way to do it, but a lot of times it can get you a surprising far, uh, far way of the way. Um, I took this photo on, on vacation, and then later um, I wanted to make this environment, so I just beveled a cube and kind of lined it all up from the camera view, reprojected, and um, then you can relight it, and... Uh, yeah, had a little hell environment, and um, check it out. My cable intersects with the ground just like David Fincher. Um, yeah. Relighting, relighting in post is one of the very coolest uh, side effects of this, of this process. Like, like right here, um, modeling, I use, uh, it used to be called Blam, but now it's FSPY. It's the standalone program that like, lets you line up the camera, and it's free. It's very cool. Um, so you can recreate the environment. That's, that's cool. And uh, it's pretty easy to deal with uh, occlusions just by sliding stuff around. But the coolest part of this is now you can literally relight your images. But the even cooler thing is you can set that as an emission plane and put other CG objects in it. And look, it's direction and uh, specific lighting and reflections on CG objects. And if you do this sort of thing, that's, that's, a, that's hard to do generally. Um, and it's good for scenes like this, where I wanted to add this, this grass in there, but you need every point of the room is going to have slightly different directional lighting. And so you reproject the thing back on it, you set up, you try to match the original lighting, and then you can, you can actually kind of do that. And this is, uh, this is the Blender Guru grass, grass Essentials, which I am, I am in love with. Did the same thing for, um, this is a series my, my girlfriend's working on. Um, it's kind of displaced spaces and kind of dream imagery. And so just set up, you know, basic room. Um, Ignore, <laughs> ignore that. Um, you can also use it to generate shots from, from scratch. I was working on a gig where they never actually got any shots of this car driving, but they had a behind the scenes photo, so project that back on the car, and then do a little bit of animation, lots of noise modifiers, and then you've got the, you've got the car driving. And they were like, what? And I was like, what? And it was really fun. Um, I recently did a gig, or a gig, it's a personal project, where I wanted this floating inside of a cabin. Um, it's supposed to be floating over the tundra. So I actually had like this real cabin that I'd filmed in, and I had all these behind the scene photos. So you use the whole blam thing to kind of just streamline lining up the camera. You don't need it, but um, mostly just putting stuff back, back on the cubes, sliding stuff around. Even when you don't really get it right, it still kind of looks, looks right. Your brain, people's brains want the stuff to work. Um, and so just mapped it, mapped it all back onto there. And um, I was able to put this whole thing together in a deceptive free time unit, which is the area between when I think I should go to bed and decide to just poke at one more thing and when I actually go to bed like three hours later. And that's when I get m most of the work done in, in my life. Um, both personal, kind of like this, and, uh, and uh, professional. That's um, because it turns out people will totally pay you to do this too. Um, I recently had a gig I can't talk about, but it's for a fairly well-known show with a fairly iconic set that they had torn down. And they were like, we just need a couple more shots of this set. So I watched the whole show, took frame grabs of the exact same thing I was just talking about, rebuilt the set, and uh, was able to render it out. And now they have that set, and people can't even tell CG, which is very cool. Um, a gig I can talk a little bit about was supposed to take place, uh, it's Ed Sheeran South of the Border, which I finished up like a week and a half ago. You guys should totally watch the music video, it's really fun. Um, but it's supposed to have this uh, underground spy bunker, kind of a, a, a bat cave type situation. And so, yeah, I stayed up one night and I projected some electronics onto cubes, used some assets from that cabin, was able to, you know, those little drawers and things. And I put together this thing and I showed the director and the director was like, I hate it! It looks like the back of a grocery store! And I was like, ouch! Okay, um, let's add like a little brick arch and make the screens actually light up so it looks better. And he's like, oh, I love it! And I was like, oh, phew. Um, <laughs> so 
yeah, most all of this stuff is just camera projected. Um, had to you know stitch and stitch and stuff together. The background is just a flat thing that I displaced with an, um, a depth map because that is actually a cool thing to be able to do. Um, lots of lots of little little replacements and things. This was using um, this add-on Car Rig Pro, where it actually uses you just make one curve and it handles all the physics and it snaps the wheels to the ground. And it was like, oh, it was. I'm not doing it justice here. Um, yeah, that was, that was a fun one. Uh, honestly, a lot of the stuff we did for this one was just the director thinking, oh, I want to be able to rework how the audience experiences like this, this moment. And so can we change the wall? Can we emphasize this thing, scale it bigger? And it's cool to be able to be able to do that in post. Um, so I want to take a second. Is this cheating? Um, I obviously do, do not know architecture. I did not lay any bricks. I didn't paint anything like that. Um, I just kind of harvested. I took a picture and I was like, yeah, I, I, I did this now. Um, this doesn't bother me because I'm not trying to make a CG building. I'm always just trying to make a, an image that happens to have a CG building in it. And um, I'm effectively making, making a photo collage. And um, also, I'm already cheating because I'm using this mind-meltingly powerful program that can like, like do 2D animation and, and uh, simulate water and do characters. And um, I kind of disagree with Tom. This is like the best program I've ever used in my entire life. It can like reconstruct cathedrals and simulate molecules. And the fact that all of us are here is just a testament to the fact that there's like these developers whose brains work in ways that like I'll never be able to like understand ever, and so this is this incredibly powerful tool, and it's changed my life, so thank you to everybody who's ever worked on it. This is... <laughs> so I'm stopping for an additional sec, because some of this is a little bit of an oversimplification. Um, like, no, the technical stuff is not any harder than, than this. It really is, you take a, you know, you can take stuff and just do stuff and give an impression of other things. But um, back in 2011, I did a talk kind of like this. Don't go, don't go look at it. But um, this guy came up to me afterwards, and he was, he was very angry. Uh, okay, well, he was actually very friendly, but he was like, he said I was holding out. He said I didn't explain why stuff I did, like, looked good. And I was kind of like, well, I, I walked through the, the entire thing. But that's because it isn't just putting stuff on stuff, it's, um, it's an art. And, um, and uh, let's see, um, like Blender's this incredible tool, but because it's a technical tool, it's very easy to confuse the, uh, the craft with, with, with the technology. And um, yeah, like just show me, show me the buttons that you clicked in order to remake the thing that, that you made. But like, no, Blender, Blender's a legit art medium. It's the most versatile art medium like I've ever, I've ever encountered. And art has, you know, very, very different rules. Like I can teach you all to draw just right now. You just, um, you got your paper, you got your pencil, you click. I guess now it's a, it's a left click, isn't it? Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and, uh, and you, make, you make a mark on the page and that's, that's you can draw. And it's understood then that you're going to spend the next couple decades hating everything that you do as your brain tries to reprocess how you see the world, where you turn 3D forms into 2G shapes, capturing texture, expressing it with singular lines and, and all of that. And, um, and as you work, you're actually rewiring your brain. And it's exactly the same with CG. Even if you're assembling stuff with, with libraries, it's still like passing through you. So first of all, here's the biggest thing I've learned over the past 20 years of like doing CG. This is, uh, this is a city I did in, uh, in like 2002. And, um, I modeled uh, uh, like three buildings, and I was like, that's, that's enough for a city, yeah. And this was using Boolean, so this carport here is just like two cubes in there, and I was like, nope, never need anything more than, more than that. This is, oh, it's so arty. Look at it, it's, oh, Ian Gilbert. Um, <laughs> look at the vignette. Um, so there's an electrical box. I was very proud of that, but obviously those pipes don't really intersect with those other pipes, which do intersect with the drainage, which is probably not very good for an electrical <laughs> meter. Um, and that was such a big hit that I just had three more disconnected electrical boxes in, in this one. And um, that has nothing to do with a technical limitation. I just couldn't, couldn't be bothered. Same with like right here. There's this uh, three-way overpass that could go in this hole, but instead it smashes into the retaining wall at exactly 55 miles per hour, which two little <laughs> speed limit signs mounted 20 feet from each other <laughs> will tell you. Um, electrical box up there on the ceiling again. Let's stick with the vignettes. But yeah, whole room full of pipes, which obviously do not go anywhere above, above the ceiling. Um, and I've, I've, I've learned things since then. Now if I do a city, it's going to use, you know, one, two, three. Oh, well, that's a bad example. But if I do a room full of pipes, they're definitely going to terminate, you know, off, off camera. Um, that's, that's not good. A lot of times when I teach people CG, they'll, they'll take, um, they'll just like turn on subsurf and start extruding stuff out and like tweaking with the things and then 
they're like, man, why doesn't this look as good as the thing that you made? And like, first of all, you made like this chrome space starfish. This is the dopest thing I've seen in my entire life. But also, I spent like three days making the exact same thing. Like, you just don't be, don't get to the point where you think it's, it's done yet. Um, and that's honestly, that's, that was the big thing that, that I had to learn. Um, like, same with this one. Like, uh, I could have, you know, these are, these are used boxes. I could have added some grease and stuff. Could have added a texture, the, the emission plane. It's implied that this thing is like, a vending machine that gives these takeout boxes, but there's not a single hole on the front that would actually be big enough for those boxes. These are things I knew, I just couldn't really be bothered, which leads me to world building, which is the name of this talk, and so far it's all been like image textures, and I'm like, what's the difference? But um, world building is the process where if you're working on a, on a novel or a web series or a film or anything like that, where you think through the rules of how, of how that world operates. It's like, What's the, uh, what's the government, or the religion, or the currency, or the weather, or the technology? And, um, and how do these things all kind of interplay? Um, it turns out, as soon, as soon as you start this process of thinking through all of that, again, your brain begins to rewire. And the coolest part about all of it is that it means you just can be constantly engaged in, in everything, because like every single detail, everything people say, every, every little mannerism that they have, details of architecture can all be clues you can kind of just like harvest. Um, in fact, it's usually like the little inane things, like um, the, uh, the, 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 the dents on a doorknob, or like the patterns of like wet footprints walking away, diverging in a room, or like the buildup of oils on like a door where a thousand people have pressed. And then sometimes you feel just like so incredibly sad for no reason as you're looking at all of these things, and you're like, why am, I, why am I gathering all of these details? Why am I trying to store this in my head? What am I trying to like hold on to? What am I afraid of losing? And it means you just can't stop ever. And you're not the best boyfriend ever, but you're not the worst boyfriend ever. And you start looking at like the people closest to you and you keep trying to hold them tighter and tighter. And you want to call it love, but you know secretly deep down it's probably fear. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> 3D modelers experience too. You start to model a thing and then you go outside and you start noticing all these tiny little details everywhere of like, of this thing. You see it everywhere and you're stockpiling this new thing. You go back, you look at your model, you're like, ah, oh, fire hydrant, I have failed to capture your essence. You start to look it up on Wikipedia. Like who, who first designed these things? Where was the first thing ever, ever, what's, where was the first fire hydrant? Um, can I buy one? Like, you might think I don't own a vending machine or a half dozen beacons. You also might be, <laughs> might be mistaken. Um, <laughs> Or like reader boards. I, I absolutely love reader boards because it's like these awkward businesses. It's their one direct channel for communicating with the public. And like, who's talking? Is it the business? Is it the, is it the owner? This one, um, oh, and this asset is uh, free on, uh, on uh, BlendSwap if anyone wants to play around with it because the only thing better than um, having a weird obsession is uh, trying to share it to other people. Um, this one's in my town. It said the exact same thing for four years and you just get to watch it phase in and out of relevance like an old friend. Um, this, one, this one's actually a little bit of a landmark in a, in a nearby town. It's, um, oh, it's beautiful because it's like, that's the best thing about reader boards is they just return to dust. We, I did some Googling going back in time. Like, what's, a, what's an Elio pen? Oh, Delio pen. They since now, they sell t-shirts with this design on it, which has kind of, you know, made it a little bit too popular. Kind of ruined it for me a little bit. Um, but reader boards are a great way of expressing transition, or um, exposition. Exposition is information that you think the, uh, the viewer or the audience needs to know about your story. Um, oh yeah, oops. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this is a, an, uh, inspired by unfortunate occlusions in uh, Amsterdam, the, uh, the weekday anal tours. Um, <laughs> So ex exposition, yeah, it's information you think the audience should know, and um, it, can be, it can be like counterculture groups, spray painting, you know, obvious slogans on conveniently placed brick walls in the background. It could be news anchors talking about only crimes relevant directly to your protagonist, or, uh, or news, uh, newspapers talking about, you know, exactly what's relevant to, to everything, um, which is, can be kind of on the nose. I like it when it's a little bit more subtle, where it's like the audience has to try a little bit harder to kind of feel out the vibe, the vibe of a thing. But uh, yeah, you can, start, you can start from world building with, with anywhere, like, uh, like with newspapers. Um, like, you can make a personal wiki. You can go nuts. You can just keep, keep thinking and adding all these little nodes that are connected until you've planned out the entire world. And maybe it'll make your novel better, but it's also just kind of, kind of fun. Um, I like to go to coffee shops and, and do that. I've got a, a personal one on my website where I'm just like filling everything out. And, um, and it's actually, it's good to get out and about. I like to, to go, you know, like listen to music and like care, um, carry a notepad and just kind of do, do doodles and stuff and like plan things out. Then you come back and you work on it in, in Blender. So you're using as much of your brain as possible. I always see such cool concept art and I always think, man, I want to I wanna have to make concept art. But it turns out the fastest way for me to 
think is actually mocking stuff up in Blender, because you can just rotate, scale, flip, copy, paste, and all of that, instead of like committing ink to a, into a page. Um, I just had, I don't, I draw a lot, and I never have anything to do with it, so I put them all here. <laughs> um, okay, so I was the visual effects supervisor on this project called um, Prospect, which is a short film, I think it's on Netflix in certain regions now, um, it's, it's really fun. And uh, whereas most projects, I show up and like the day before, the, the art team shows up with like gray paint and like a bunch of four by eight wooden panels and they paint them and hot glue like motherboards on it. I'm like, it's a spaceship! These guys rented a warehouse and they spent like seven months designing everything from scratch. They designed all the sets on CAD programs, cutting them out on CNC machines, put them together like these giant puzzles. Um, they designed their own fonts, they built like actual full-size spaceships and stuff. Um, everything was dirty. I, I, I made this shot full CG, and then they actually built this foreground bit in real life and filmed it with their custom lenses just to add realism. Like, you're always looking through windows. You never get this God's eye view of the entire thing. It's always, you're, like, you're always trapped in there with the, uh, with the actors, which makes it feel like when things go wrong, you don't have an easy escape, um, which I thought was, was really cool. Uh, Hey, I didn't think that would work, but that, that was a good old costume. Um, I, uh, I made this ship, which is basically just a reference for a guy who built a four-foot miniature of it, and then we filmed that just to make everything kind of more, more textural, which was, which was really cool. Um, I also built this, uh, this big old freighter, which uh, lots of little, lots of little grievals, um, and they spent a ton of time trying to figure out like, the exact way that the lighting would pass over, over all of this stuff. Um, the hardest part was actually the containers, because they're all covered in these like, in-world logos and things that you can barely even see. But, um, but yeah, figuring out the, uh, the lighting for this required a lot of planning. Um, we, we mocked up little things. In the end, we just kind of put a thing on an arm and like, tried to kind of match it up, because it made continuity a little bit of a pain in the butt. But um, let's see. Oh, yeah, one of the biggest re references was uh, old Apollo imagery, because that's how it actually looks. Like It turns out when you're exposed for like, daylight, you don't see a lot of stars. Um, that's only when you have like, a, long, a long exposure. Um, and this was like, this wasn't Blender, but this was like 2,000 shots of just adding this constant dust anytime they're out on a planet, which uh, if you have a chance to put dust in like, 2,000 shots over the period of a summer, I, uh, I recommend uh, go for it. Um, <laughs> Uh, I also have a bunch of personal gigs I'm trying to wrap up. This is kind of a continuation of a, of a Dynamo web series I've been working on since, like, forever. Um, but this is kind of a, a reboot type thing. Um, and some of it takes place in this market, and I've just been, like, going nuts, letting myself go crazy with, like, the little details and stuff. Um, I love designing maps that exist in-world because it's, like, somebody in the world built this map for other people that are also in the world, and it's fun to kind of be able to exist in, in, that, in that zone. Hey, it's the tower from uh, Church of Steel, because they released it open source. Um, <laughs> yeah, lot, just lots of little, little bits. Uh, my friend Paul Spooner helped make this, this subway map. Um, if you're working on a story, it's actually really cool to start off with a map, because then when a character goes from A to B, you know like, what that experience is like, and it actually helps you kind of like, tell the story. Um, and I love CG, but also it's nice to be able to film something without having to spend months doing post work on it. So we tried to build a full set in our garage. Actually, it's, um, it's a, I, bought, I bought a church a couple of years ago out in the, in the wet woods, and I'm trying to turn it into like a film studio thing, um, which has been fun, a challenge. And um, so this was, but it's got lots of room for building sets and wacky stuff like that. And of course, we mocked it up in Blender first. Um, and uh, then I took pictures of that, mapped that back onto 3D geometry so that I was able to do cuts like, this is all real, this is, this is CG. Um, and this is a very slow way to uh, make a film, but it's very, it's very rewarding. Um, so yeah, here's the green screen. If you keep things messy enough, you don't have to put up a lot of tracking markers, they just are built in. <laughs> and uh, this is just to show off this amazing shadow casting chicken nightmare. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, this, this is fun, because you'll notice we built, we built the entire back of the set, and that means we're able to film all of the close-ups and stuff, and 90% of the footage without any CG, then we just back up and we're able to fill in that, that in-between area um, after the fact, really quick. Uh, kind of same with, same with this one. We, uh, I built this fake fire escape type thing going on right here, and... Um, yeah, and he barely includes any CG, so we're able to do this like really quick. You can see behind his head, there's still definitely a reflection with some trees, but I know a CG guy who's going to deal with that. I just haven't wanted to do it yet. Uh, so making making these lazy tutorials um, has been. <laughs> Model a moth in a wings down position. Moths are pure chaos, so don't stress too much. Add a base key and a new shape key, and put the wings up. Add a key.
and a noise modifier in the grav editor to make the wings just go nuts. Duplicate the moth, offset the noise modifier, and again, exactly six times. No, I don't care. Make the moths a new collection. Moths! Make an emitter object and give it a particle system. Have all the moths start on the first frame with a, with a good lifetime. Have it render as a collection. Moths! For physics, select Boyds. Oh yes! Turn the mass way down. Look at Boyds. that. But can we teach them to love? Make a lamp. In the Boyd brain, create only one rule. Follow the leader. Their leader is and shall always be lamp. Tweak a couple settings. It's unavoidable. Mostly mass, max speed, angular velocity, and personal space. Oh yeah, it's a pain, but no one gets into moth wrangling for the adrenaline. Hey, check it out. They like the lamp. Now that you have this, put them anywhere. You can make a lazy scene and add moths, and people will be like, wow, you even added moths. And you'll be like, yeah, I did, and I taught them to love. Moths add realism to anything. <laughs> So that's, that's one of the, the lazy tutorials, which I kind of just made for fun, but like now that's been seen hundreds of thousands of times, and all these people are like, wow, that makes Blender look really easy. I'm going to download it right now. And it's like, oh, that's not exactly an introductory tutorial. So I spend a lot of time in the YouTube comments just trying to kind of give, give tech support or direct over to like, you know, donut tutorials and things like that. <laughs> um, but like uh, this, this image right here, it was kind of a throwaway image. I just made it because I needed a, a demo for the... Um, for the end of the tutorial. Um, but like I had that lamp growing up and the reason it's on this grassy hill overlooking a city is like I'm trying to channel Gasworks Park which is this place I spent a lot of like cool summer nights or uh, conceivably Kiki's Delivery Service because um, that's my girlfriend's favorite movie and we'll like we'll watch that and feel feel good. Um, and I normally add like camera shake to my shots but I was remembering the scene I filmed in grass with this uh, cheap handmade dolly that like looked kind of like a million bucks even though it only cost 40. Um, and like the depth of field is shallow because like using old 2012 DSLRs, like suddenly you could you could shoot with like a narrow depth of field and everyone was like, that's the cinematic look. Now of course we know that was actually the 2012 DSLR YouTube look. Um, and, uh, and from a technical sense, if you're filming at night, you need to open the aperture to get, get more light in there. Um, I also, uh, sorry, the slides are, I also made a music video with this exact concept like four years ago. Drove across the town, jumped around doing that. Um, the grass, I was obsessed with grass. I was like, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw the grass. I have to, I have to capture its grassy essence. And then Blender Guru uh, released the, the grass essentials and my soul was like, I am, I am at peace. And I was like, no, but I, I didn't do it. And my soul was like, I, I don't care. And I was like, I, I kind of wanted to do it though. And my soul was like, look kid, this thing is wild rye uncut. Learn your place. And I was like, oh, hey, all right. Um, the beacons in the background are, uh, are something I filmed at like, my, my best friend's brother's wedding. And like, when I was a kid, my dad worked in radio, and he'd take me out to the transmitter buildings, and I'd wait in the van so the radiation from the transmitter site wouldn't like, fry my brain. And I'd sit there, and I'd just look up at all these, these beacons kind of, kind of blinking. And my point is that every experience we've had and all of that all, all goes into who we are and how we, how we process everything. You, you are a giant neural network, and that's why I get the ex excited whenever anybody's saying they're gonna make a film or art or anything, because they're gonna be making something that only they can make. Um, so what if you've never done anything like this? What if you've never done CG or, or world building or, or anything like that? Is it, I like, I like to get kind of pretentious and be like, yes, I've spent three decades observing and making these little lists of the oil on the doors, but you don't need that if you have really good reference. Um, and it's, it's true, like most of us, when, when we think of, when we think of a, a house or a plane or a car, we have this kind of cartoonish version. And so then when we try to translate into a, a medium, we try to draw or do it in 3D, we end up with a, something we're not entirely proud of. And that's because it's an accurate representation of an inaccurate mental, mental concept. Uh, reference straight up bypasses that. And like, I know, I know that the, um, the translation from observation to mental concept to personal like representation could be just, that's as good of a, of a definition of art I've ever heard, but there's no reason you can't try to, to help improve and make more accurate that, that <laughs> mental concept. Um, and once you start this process, like once you start thinking in terms of breaking things down in CG for, for Blender, it starts to kind of take over. Like, nature's great for this because it's, it's random, straight random, following very organized rules. And um, I've started getting into procedural textures. Oh, and it turns out Blender has like, great tools for simulating both randomness and, and order. Um, once you start getting into procedural textures, you start to see this stuff absolutely everywhere. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah. Oh, pine cone, yeah, we can do, we can do that. Oh, look, at that. that's actually the same pattern on the grass and both the dappled sunlight. Oh, Voronoi, yeah. Um, yeah, oh, it's, and you start seeing it's just these same kind of uh, patterns overlapped over, over each other, and it's just, it becomes kind of, kind of addicting. Like, um, water is, you know, famously easy to, or, you know, straightforward to, to reproduce 
uh, procedurally. And so as I was in the middle of doing this presentation, I went out to eat and it started pouring rain in the parking lot. And I'm like, that's, I, think we can, I think we can do that. I knew there was a, a texture node that kind of looked like Swiss cheese. It turns out it's, it's Voronoi. And I was like, all right, if those Swiss cheese holes are passing through a plane and we use that cross-section to power a displacement, maybe that would look like ripples. And it would be kind of weird that the ripples get big and then, you know, as the cross-section goes through, it gets small again. But if we, like, go big enough, maybe we can capture kind of the essence of that thing. And this is, this is nothing compared to actual procedural artists. This is like a fraction of a, of a percent, but it's like I'm just getting into it and I'm really excited, so that's, uh, I've, I've shown it to you. Um, on the same note, traffic. You know, as long as everything's moving at the same speed, it's really easy. But like, I was like, all right, let's, we, I got this. Uh, so I tried to do a physics sim, and it was, oh, so many casualties. So I tried to do the same thing with everything constrained to one axis, and, and all the traffic kept backing up, and like cars were trying to go, but there wasn't room in the intersection, so everybody was getting angry, and then I was like, oh, wait a second, I've simulated traffic too well. I actually had better luck with this dark spaghetti, where I did this, and then I just took this boolean into the little cross-section there, just for trying to like capture the essence. And it turns out, like, it doesn't, it doesn't look good, but the concept's kind of fun. Um, and once you start kind of thinking fourth dimensionally, it, uh, you actually, the whole traffic thing kind of, kind of makes sense. Um, that one doesn't have a successful representation yet because I haven't, I haven't actually figured, <laughs> figured out traffic. Um, same with Griebel's. Anything, anything technologically complex on a mass scale, you can kind of abstract that. And then um, people are like, oh, that looks like it does a thing, like the outside of a Star Destroyer covered in all the little, the little doobly bits. Normally I make all of my own stuff, but I saw some NASA models for sale, and I was like, oh, like, look, that's just a Griebel cube with a rocket coming out of it. Oh, I love it. Um, and like that, obviously the rockets, you know, I, I UV unwrapped. No, I didn't. I set up these little vertices there too, so that the generative box mapping that, um, that I used to swear by back in my last talk in 2011 would know where the, where the boundaries are. So don't listen to anything I say because that's, that's, that's the, that's, don't do that. Um, so that's, that's basically it, you know. Observe the world, use reference, don't be afraid to overthink, have fun, not too much fun. If you're just trying to make a thing, use photos, photo scans, which I didn't talk about, but you guys know photo scans. Don't reinvent the wheel, there's a the photo scan. Um, so um, I also have, I have that kind of a, a, a three minutes of a thing I've been working on. Do we have three minutes? Yeah? All right. This is a, this is a thing. It's um, good. It isn't playing yet because this is so not done. Uh, and, and you'll see it. Like the audio is just stuff I dumped on there. Get to give the disclaimer. And uh, so don't, yeah, yeah. I'm going to talk over it actually. Birds. Canals because of Anthony. Yeah. This doesn't have CG. I was just really proud of, of this, this little sequence, so. Uh. Like, look at that. It's like little sparkly bits. Oh, yeah. I used sandpaper and I just scraped a piece of plexiglass. Yeah, no, no blender. That maybe wasn't a good idea, Ian.
Hey man. Merchant. No, Floorhead wants to see you. Come on. Yeah, he's good. There's gonna be dialogue and stuff, but yeah, I cut it because I'm not showing any any plot. But yeah, so that's all. That's all just done in in like a garage with like like this amazing like software. So that's that's my that's my talk. Thank you.